Hey, what's up? It's Zach, and today I'm in Adobe Illustrator creating an illustration of a lion. Um, so this is a time lapse, so I've already recorded all this and I'm just talking over it. Um, so this is a sketch that I already had laying around and I just wanted to turn it into something a little more finished. Um, so normally what I do on everything is I start off by doing the lines, like most of my lines are black. so. Like you'll see, I separated my layers a little bit. I have my sketch that's like 50% opacity on top. And then normally I do like my blacks, which is just all the lines and stuff. And then I do color and background. That's pretty much what I do for like the first things I set up in any document. Also, I know it's going very fast. So if you don't catch something or it goes too fast that you can't tell what's going on, um, just leave a comment and I'll be sure to try to elaborate on whatever you have a question on. And so yeah, right now I'm doing my line work. Um, the main tools that I use here is the pen tool, obviously, and then I use um, the, a lot of the Pathfinder tools. Like I'll create sections of black like you see right here and then just like subtract it away from something or merge everything together so it keeps my shapes kind of all together. Um, a lot of the jagged lines are also just from like me uh, dividing stuff away, which gets kind of a cool effect, kind of a um, relief print type of effect. And as you can see, once I get um, kind of the loose lines in that you saw at the very beginning, I pretty much draw the line with the pen tool, like both sides and everything. I don't really use line profiles as much anymore um, because I kind of already know how I want the lines to be and the thicknesses and stuff. And it lets me get a lot of those, like put a lot of those, um, I don't know, more painterly strokes in there. Uh, it, and it lets you like texture a line different than when, if you just draw, like draw it using a stroke and stuff, it can get really like, monotonous like that and the eye really catches like oh you're just using the same brush setting over and over you're just using the same stroke setting over and over this kind of gives it kind of more a handcrafted look um so my strategy or whatever when i'm working on something like this is to pretty much draw um half the face of whatever but at least if it's looking straight directly at you i draw half the face and then i also draw like the sections that would kind of curve over a little bit so that way you don't get like stark, um, like two things just butting together. I don't know, like it's super obvious you just flipped it. So yeah, I, I do kind of draw over a little bit and then I periodically throughout it, like I'll copy everything together and then um, flip it so I can see how it's looking. But that's, and then still mainly I just work on one side until I get it somewhere where it's like just kind of nitpick things. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I flipped it right there and I'm already changing like, like it's hard to tell what doesn't look good if you're just drawing, if you just see it on one side, but when you do flip it around and see it on both sides, it's like, wow, that looks bad. Um, so I know there's a tool where you can, um, like it draws it on the other side for you or whatever. Um, I just haven't picked that up yet. But as you can see, I'm just kind of blocking out different sections, um, experimenting because I don't really know um, I didn't have like a super detailed sketch to begin with, um, so a lot of these problems can kind of be taken care of if you sketch better. And also a lot of times I do sketch with like just the pen tool and Illustrator, but if you do sketch on paper and stuff, you should check out Adobe Capture. Um, that's what I do use every time that I do sketch on paper to get it in. Um, and there's some really great tools on there to actually just vector, um, like just have it automatically vector your drawing, which is pretty sweet. Um, one thing that I do use a lot is I go into groups and then um, kind of draw there so I can see things isolated. I just double click with the uh, direct selection tool or whatever and um, it, it lets me like see what object I'm actually messing with and lets me kind of keep everything together and, like right there where it blurs everything out behind it or lightens it or whatever. Um, yeah, that's mainly just so I can see like because it gets kind of confusing if you since you're not using like lines you're kind of just using a bunch of shapes put together it's hard to tell like what you're actually need to be pathfinding or why um so just flipping it again um it's looking closer i also just use a clipping mask there to um kind of stop everything like the runaway pieces that were getting in the way um just bolding some lines up um this style kind of has like super super thick lines and so a lot of times I'll make things like way too thin and then have to go back in like as I've said so you'll see it like, like the whole half the drawing is just me making lines thicker and thinner um, but I guess that's just how it goes.
Also, a lot of times I'll make my outlines a lot thicker on the bottom to try to give it a little weight. And yeah, so I'm about to start my coloring and I don't really do everything exactly optimally right. Um, I think I do use the live uh, paint bucket tool or whatever here and that's pretty useful. Um, as you can see, uh, right now, I, since I draw with white, I kind of had to merge, or like, uh, what is it, divide, and then merge everything together, and then get rid of all that white, so it's just my lines left. Um, I'm kind of, ex I don't exactly know what I'm doing here, so I kind of, like, will draw some things blue, and then draw them back white, but um, it's really just me not knowing what I'm doing and experimenting, so, and most of the rest of the video is just that. Um, the background, I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do. I had an idea for the color scheme, but not as much the exact idea for the background. So as you can see, like, experimenting with that, that's something I do a lot, is I'll uh, duplicate the illustration and then put it behind it, blown up a little bit with about 50% opacity or something. Um, kind of gives it a cool look. Um, so yeah, I end up deciding to do like kind of a mirror type thing, or like almost like a doorbell even. Um, I don't know, I just saw a picture that looked kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm drawing in uh, some cutaways right now. Those are not that well drawn, but I didn't I didn't want to use the blend tool to cut it out. And then I ended up doing it on the top anyway because I couldn't get it to work. So I guess I'm kind of just showing both ways. Um, I just create two lines with stroke profiles and then blend those together. <laughs> Expand appearance. Um, and then merge them together and then subtract them from the frame. Um, right now I'm just creating kind of like a grid, which is also, I just created lines with the blend tool, rotated, rotated one like 45 degrees, and then that's going to be the background for everything. Um, right now I'm just creating circles, and those are going to cut away from the frame, which will give it the corners like that. I don't think I did this the most optimal way, but I just copied one corner over and over. Um, wasn't sure how else to do it, but so yeah. Uh, and then a lot of this is done in the appearance panel or appearance window. Um, it took me forever to get used to that, like using that, but st you can do really cool things with like multiple different strokes. And then um, also under um, just the stroke window, you can get a lot of options of whether you want to align it to the inside, outside, or how you want your tips to be. Uh, or corners, and that's what I'm playing with now. I end up going, a lot of times it'll like, especially if you use jagged lines, the corners will look real nasty and like, um, you'll have to round them off and stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm just playing around with different outlines. Um, like I said, mostly the appearance panel, uh, and then just creating clipping masks of different stuff. Um, I try to keep like, one thing I do try to do is like just a couple different weights throughout. So like, as you see, a bunch of the outline weights are all the same. Like they're like four pixels or eight pixels or whatever it is. And I just try to use that as like my baseline like weight and base everything around that. That way you don't have just like 50 different weights of lines in like a frame or something that's supposed to, like should have consistent shading throughout it. Um, so yeah, just adding little accents because <laughs> I felt like it was boring. Um, so yeah, I'm probably just going to let the rest of the time lapse roll. I'm just about done. I appreciate you checking out the video. If you're interested in seeing more, please like um, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.